Welcome to the IHS Market Harmony Enterprise Forecast Hypewell Exercise. In the case of our Typewell Exercise, a shared group has already been made for us. We're going to work in the Bird Bear Oil Wells. So let's select the Attributes tab and then select all the constituent wells within the Bird Bear group. You'll notice we have 63 wells in this group. It appears that they all have a primary fluid of oil and they're all on flowing status. Perhaps we're looking at analyzing these wells with different operators in mind, and you can see that all of the wells have an operator assigned to them. We may do a type well analysis and evaluate whether or not different operators are having a different level of success. If I go to the diagnostics plot and click the reset button, I'm going to change back to the auto template so we can view all of the production data for these wells. Let's disable the water as well as the gas rate and simply look at the oil you'll see that diagnostically there is a reasonable trend within the data spread. We could choose to include or exclude wells at this point. Right now I'm simply hovering over the wells and its respective production data is being bolded in the plot. This looks like a relatively reasonable group of wells for type well analysis. If we select the group and move to the analysis tab, you'll notice we have the option of creating a type well we're going to make an oil type well in this case. Notice that again in the analysis manager the plus button has been clicked for you. However, before we create any declines, let's evaluate our data. Rather than the analysis manager tab, I'd like to go to the wells tab. On the wells tab, every well in the group is going to be visible. As I hover over each well, notice that its data set is bolded in the type well plot. And in this way, I can choose to include or exclude production data sets for individual wells from my type well analysis without removing the well outright from the group. Simply select or unselect the checkbox to include or exclude a well. You can also click on the data. So if I don't like the data, that's highlighted here in green, the respective well will be selected in the Wells tab. So I can quickly pick data sets that look suspect and remove those wells from my analysis. Once you've removed any wells that appear to be outliers, you may want to think about adjusting them on the normalized time axis. It's quite common for wells to have a cleaning up period where the rates are increasing initially. It's possible to adjust the production rates along the normalized time axis by using the small blue arrows to translate the data back and forth. You'll notice I'm moving one of the wells with a red production data set right now. However, it may be quite time consuming to do that for every well. So there's a feature in the toolbar of the wells pane to set the start date to the peak rate on the normalized time axis. And when we click that button, you can see that the wells have all been shifted accordingly. It's often a good idea to take a quick look and make sure that there weren't any extraneous measurements causing the data to be shifted inappropriately. By unlocking the axis and going into negative time, I can see that there are no strange anomalous peaks in the data that have caused the data to be shifted in an unexpected way. So I would say, that the shifting has been done quite well at this time. I'm going to move us back to a zero start time and lock that axis. Now that we've adjusted for wells that should be included or excluded and adjusted them on normalized time, let's have a look at the plot selection tab. And from here, it's possible to make changes to the X and Y axis of the plot. Instead of plotting on normalized time, you can select normalized flowing time if that's more meaningful to you. Likewise, on the y-axis, you can plot the rate by any numerical attribute in your project. For example, in this project under the custom attributes, we have a custom attribute of lateral length. Simply choose the appropriate unit and you'll notice that the data on the y-axis is updated to show operated oil rate by lateral length. And I'm simply going to rescale the plot to have the data come back Once you've made the adjustments that are interesting to you, 
you can go to the Analysis Manager. Before creating any declines, it's not uncommon to want to look at group data. Most of the features that you're looking for will be located in the toolbar at the top of the type well plot. For example, the average rate for the data is shown here. It's the thick green line on the plot right now. You can likewise elect to show your P90, P50, and P10. This next button over is to hide or show all of the individual wells. Following that, you have the option to show the number of wells on production. And you'll see that shown here on the plot. This can be useful to help account for time periods where very few wells are online. It's commonly referred to as the orphan effect. The next feature I want to talk about is color management. If you select that, you'll notice you can color all the individual wells gray. The default is for all of them to be colored uniquely. But another very interesting feature is to color by attribute. And you can color your well production data by any text attribute. In this case, I'm going to pick operator. And since I don't know which color corresponds to which operator, I'll right click and show the legend. And now I can quickly see, I'll turn off my group rates to make it a little easier. I can quickly see how each operator is performing. So it may be that the operator shown in green, operator Y, seems to be maybe having a little more success in this area than is the orange operator, operator X. So it's very easy for you to quickly evaluate whether or not a particular operator, completion type, prop and type, and so on, are more effective than others in this type of type well analysis. For simplicity, let's turn all the wells gray again. That will make it easier for us to visualize the group rates. I'm going to hide the legend again so the plot is not so busy. Let's turn on our group rates again. Average rate, P90, P50, and P10. I'm also showing all wells. Let's create a new oil decline. You can see the decline's been placed on the graph, and we can use our mouse to adjust it in a similar fashion to how we did a single well decline. All of the same shortcuts apply here. Likewise, you can go to the analysis parameters and enter values to adjust how your line fits the data. More commonly, people will want to use their group data sets. So for example, if we go to select points, I can choose to fit to any of my group data sets. Let's choose average rate. A dialog opens where I can restrict the range of data being used for this line fit. For example, I could restrict it based on the number of wells still on production. I'm not going to in this case though, so let's click OK. Remember, good housekeeping is always a good idea. Let's rename this average rate. And let's go ahead and add a new oil decline. In this case, we're going to choose to fit it to the average rate again, but we're going to account for a time when most of the wells were on production by using the slider and clicking OK. You'll notice now I have two different declines on the plot, and they vary based on the fact that I set a restricted range of data for line fitting. Again, right click and rename. Let's call it average rate, but this time number of wells to imply that we've made an adjustment. This brings me to another feature that exists in Harmony Enterprise that I skipped over earlier. It's here in the main toolbar, Append Historical Production with the selected forecast. The easiest way to explain it is simply to use the tool. If I click on it, it's going to list any declines that the wells within this type well group have. In this case, every well 
has an oil rate cum decline. If it had additional declines, they would all be listed here. If I select that decline, you'll notice that something happens to the production data. Let's turn off some of our group data sets to make this easier to see. And we'll also change our wells back to a unique color scale to help us see. You'll notice that for each well, a forecast has been appended to the historical data. So as the historical data comes to an end, the forecast takes over. Because we're now including the forecast with the historical production, we can account for that as part of a way to deal with the orphan effect. We can now use a decline and fit it to the group data set with the forecasts included. So if we create an oil decline, we will select average rate again. But this time, after the historical data, the forecasted data is also included. And we'll click OK. Let's right click and rename. This is still our average rate, but it's with a forecast included. If we hide the wells, you can now quickly visualize the difference between the three declines. The thick green line is indicating the average rate with the forecast data included. Now let's suppose that we want to do more analysis on this type well group, but we'd like to create a new worksheet because this one's getting a bit busy. What we can do is go back to the new worksheet and we'll select type well again, oil type well. And you'll notice that all of our wells are loaded again. If we go to the wells tab, there are wells that we had excluded from consideration earlier in the first type well worksheet. And now they're showing again. To make it easier to see, let's rename this worksheet. Again, you can right click to rename anything in Harmony. And we'll rename this worksheet P105090. Now, if we go into the Wells tab, you can see how we could continue to select data and adjust these wells along the time axis. However, instead, we could leverage the work we did on the earlier worksheet. In the Wells pane near the top, there's a button to seed your selections from an earlier worksheet. If we select that feature, you'll notice that you can choose which worksheet you want to use as your source. In this case, we only have one other one called Oil Type Well, but you might have a series of them. Notice after we've made the selection that a number of wells have been excluded and they have all been adjusted on the normalized time axis to match those settings already in our first Oil Type Well worksheet. Let's go back to the Analysis Manager now, collapse all of the analyses, and make some new declines. I'm going to quickly fit one to our P90. We'll right-click and rename it P90. Let's make another one, Oil Decline, and fit it to the P50 data. Again, you could restrict the range if you chose to. We're not going to. Rename P50. And finally, we'll make a P10 decline. So oil decline. And we're going to select points and fit that to our P10. Right click rename to P10. So we very quickly created a P90, 50, and P10 decline analysis for this group of wells. What if we wanted to use these declines to describe how a future well might perform? We're going to use the clipboard feature in Harmony Enterprise to use these decline parameters to describe a planned well. This feature is available in a number of locations in the application. To access it, right click on the analysis and copy to clipboard. And I'm going to do that for each of our declines, P90, P50, and P10. Notice that the clipboard has appeared in the far right hand pane and each of the three declines I've just copied are showing in that clipboard. Here's another reason why we recommend good housekeeping. You can see that each decline is named the same way it was in the Analysis Manager, 
which really helps me to keep track of what things are along the way. But before we create our new well, let's first make a report. If we click on the print preview, you'll see we have a number of options. We can preview the plot, just the parameters, or the parameters with the plot, depending upon our preference. I'm going to pick plot and parameters in portrait mode here. You can see we have the graph with all the well data. And if I zoom in and scroll down, you're able to see that the P90, P50, and P10 analyses on this worksheet are also displayed. Let's go back to the GIS now and plan a new well. Since I don't know where these wells are on the map, first I'm going to reset the GIS. And you'll see there they are highlighted in green. I'm going to zoom in using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And again, let's select all the wells in the bird bear group. And here they are highlighted. There are two ways that we can add a well to the project. And the first is in the Entity Viewer by clicking the plus button. If we create a well this way, it will not have an XY or lat long location. So instead, I'm going to choose to create this well directly on the GIS view in the toolbar above the map. You'll see several icons for creating wells, and I'm going to make one in the vicinity of the other wells. Let's select an oil well. Notice the icon has changed to an arrow with a well for my mouse. I can simply navigate to where I want my well and click once. These are likely the most inexpensive wells we'll ever plan. One click and a well has been created for you in the project. You'll notice that it's highlighted in purple in the Entity Viewer under an unknown field and unknown reservoir category because there's no data assigned to this well. You can see here in the Entity Viewer that unknown field and unknown reservoir. Let's navigate to the attributes and notice that the field and reservoir fields are blank and this makes perfectly good sense. We haven't populated them yet. Let's create a decline sheet for this well. Notice that the plot is blank. We would expect this as there's no production data available for a planned well. So there's really no sense in adding a decline analysis. Instead, we're going to leverage the declines we created previously. And we can simply drag and drop them from the clipboard into our analysis manager. If we want to see them on the plot, we need to select them. And notice now that I have a P10, 50, and 90 originally created on my type well analysis sheet that can describe how this future well might produce. On the theme of good housekeeping, let's make sure we have the appropriate attributes. So I've selected my new well as well as a well in the bird bear reservoir. And I'm going to copy the field and reservoir data into my new well. And you'll note that that well has now been moved. If I right click on it in the attributes tab, I can select it and it's highlighted within the bird bear group. It's also highlighted on the GIS and it's the current well selected in the analysis tab with its three descriptive declines. Thank you for joining us for the Harmony Enterprise Forecast Hypewell exercise. If you have any questions or require more information, please go to our website and click on Contact Us. Thank you.